Welcome back! Today I'm giving Microsoft Flight Simulator a go. And I'm going to start the way everybody else does, by doing a fly through of my current hometown, Las Vegas, Nevada. With the International Airport selected, I need to pick a suitably slow aircraft so I can really enjoy the sights. I have attempted a fly through with a 747, with tragic consequences. Oh, it's so vibrant and slow. This looks like the aircraft for me. They have done a great job at mapping this place. Every bachelor party in North America must recognize this. Cleared for takeoff runway 26 right Savage X-ray Golf Sierra. It looks like we have two souls on board. I assume that's the instructor in the back. It's probably for the best. Huh, he's chosen to bail out. Fair play. Oh, no, he's back. No, oh, never mind. Right, let's get this show on the road. Oh, listen to it roar. And I'm airborne. Mission accomplished. If I keep heading straight west towards those mountains, I'll eventually run into my house. Obviously you can't fly over Vegas and not take your aircraft down the strip, so let's make a nice hard right. Golf Sierra is type Savage SAVG, one mile southwest of Las Vegas, 3,400 feet. Request clearance to transition Bravo airspace. Well, there's the Mandalay Bay, so I've managed Zero to not get Savage lost thus far. I shouldn't get too close to the look, so it might blind me of that massive beacon that comes out the top of it. Flying straight at a mini Statue of Liberty must be counted as treason. We'll just dodge that. Well, they've done a great job building the place, but I don't remember quite this many trees. There was definitely palm trees, though. And if you look to your right, is one of the greatest bars to never take your wife to. Twin Peaks. That's not to say you can't take all your buddies there when they come to visit you. Ah, the Bellagio Fountains. I might come back later for a show. If it wasn't for the dense foliage, I would be considering a landing on the strip. No flight down the strip is truly complete until you've circled the Trump International. That thing is fantastic when the sun hits it from a certain angle and turns it into a gigantic blinding beacon of gold. I'm going to circle us from a safe distance to avoid accidentally crashing into it, because of course doing so would lead to accusations of political bias.
obviously the stratosphere is next. Ah, Circus Circus, where they filmed most of the film Casino. Let's get a closer view of this place. It looks like it's melted. Well, that's enough circling. It's time to point at Fremont Street and head towards some of my favourite watering holes. Just off my 11 o'clock, we have the D, which I'm led to believe many people are fond of. And just off my 1 o'clock is where my buddy Jim lives. Yeah, Jim. That's an unbreakable code. We'll just give his building a little circle and a wave. Oh, the El Cortez. Big fan. Very unique smell. Oh, I have cocked it up. Oh, full power, full power. Ah, the plane is screaming. Oh, I nearly took out Jim's building. Oh, made it. I've followed Las Vegas Boulevard from Fremont all the way to Nellis Air Force Base. I'm sure the USAF won't mind if I land here. I'm pretty sure this tiny aircraft doesn't need the full runway to land on, so let's just go about halfway down and get it done. It might have helped if I'd properly aligned myself, though. A good old last-minute correction there. And let's panic and whack the brakes on. It turns out in this aircraft, there is such a thing as too much brake. Oh, in front of the USAF as well. This is embarrassing, and I've probably blacked their runway. Ah, the west side of town, a bit closer to home. There we have Red Rock Casino. The mapping's a little out of date, just on the left there is where the new baseball stadium is, but the rest of it looks good. And just coming into view now is my shooting range. Because Vegas has moved so close to it, they don't allow 50 cal anymore. Probably something to do with the ricochet calculation. If you ever get fed up of all the bars, drinking, gambling and partying, you can always head out to Red Rock Canyon. I thoroughly recommend it. And here we are flying over Calico 1. This whole area looks a little bit like Mars, and as it's the first stop on the loop, it tends to be where most of the tourists stop. There's the car park that is always rammed. But if you go a quarter mile down the road, you've got Calico 2. That looks exactly the same and is always a lot quieter. Weird. On the nose is Turtlehead's Peak. Let's head there. I've hiked it before, but I've never flown over it. It's about 6,000 feet. I'm pretty sure this aircraft should be able to make it. I mean, hopefully. Oh, I think I've messed it up. Yep, I bought. I'll come around for another go.
That's more like it. I didn't bottle it in the slightest. That snow on the horizon is towards Mount Charleston. Let's head over there. So the journey in this thing is taking a bit longer than expected. And I need to be above 11,000 feet to make sure I don't smash into the side of Charleston. That looks like Griffiths peek out the window, where I managed to get cramp in both legs at the same time. That was a pretty grim summer. Ah, finally, the top of Charleston. We'll just give this a quick flyby and then race back down through the valley. I'll be trying my best not to overspeed the aircraft. Believe it or not, we get a pretty decent ski season around here. And there we have Lake Mead, which means I must be getting close to Hoover Dam. Let's see if I can either fly under the Memorial Bridge or try and land on the dam itself. There it is, the bridge that divides Nevada from Arizona. I'm pretty sure I've got this. The dam seems a little low res. Ah oh, well. And cleared it now. Oh, no, the game had other ideas. It turns out it's solid. Thank you for watching and like and subscribe if you'd like to see more Microsoft Flight Sim.